Greetings and welcome once again to Music and Meditation with Pastor Fred and Sharon Moore. And thank you, Sharon, for that beautiful hymn, Surely Goodness and Mercy. And our theme is Magnificent Mercy. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Listen to these words of scripture. Romans twelve nineteen. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Jesus said to love our enemies and to bless those who persecute us. Paul has said the same thing in uh, this in another chapter in the letter to the Church of Rome. For the Christian, the question of taking revenge is answered. Never do it. Never do it. There is no situation in which the Christian is to seek revenge on another, no matter how vile the deed done to one or one's loved ones. God knows the corruption. He knows the corruption. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in his way. The words revenge and vengeance, are they the same? Vengeance is a noun used to describe an act of revenge. Revenge has a negative connotation among with words like vendetta, vindictiveness, and reprisal. If essentially, these words have a similar meaning, which does lead to some complexity. Now, the opposite of these words are forgiveness and pardon. How do we accept this? How do we internalize this? Vengeance is a noun used to describe the action of revenge. So does the Lord act with vengeance? First Peter 3, 8 and 9. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. So, does this scripture passage encourage us to act with vengeance or mercy? Uh, that will come upon a man or a woman if they take God's place in this manner. God, who is the judge, so that we do not have to be, has ordained it to be this way. For our hearts are to be free from hatred. We must be allowed to forgive and move on. But God is just. No one ever gives away with anything. Here are some translations of Romans 12:19. From the message, don't insist on getting even. That's not enough for you. you know, I'll do the judging, says God. I'll take care of it. In the New Living Translation, dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. In Revelation 3.19, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn from your indifference. Yes. Since we're all sinners, 
we might sometimes feel justified with our anger. But like God's people of old did, our emotions can lead us astray. Since we're all sinners, well, we might see our anger in a way that does not please the Lord. Only by relying on God, God can we ensure that any vengeance inflicted is inflicted righteously. How is that possible? If God is in charge of vengeance, then we need to ensure that we work with forgiveness. Authentic forgiveness. Authentic forgiveness. It stems from a deep faith that we are not enough, that love is abundant, and that even though we may have wronged and wounded, we don't spend our emotional energy trying to have that debt paid back. It takes practice to let go and let God. Releasing resentment. It requires a lot of prayer sometimes. We all need to focus on and to explore ways to learn and to accept and to forgive and to love each other. This is an opportunity to practice love even when it's not easy. Forgiveness blends both mercy and justice. Well, why forgive? Because forgiveness is a form of surrender and release to expand our capacity of love. After suffering devastating tragedy, there are some lifting stories of remarkable people who were able to put aside their anger and to find mercy in their hearts. We're all familiar with Mother Teresa. She said, if we really want to love, we must learn to forgive. We may feel that what we do in this matter is just a drop in the bucket, but if that drop were not there, the ocean would be missing one drop. So, how do we let go of resentment and vengeance? Well, we just need to refocus our thoughts on positive emotions, perhaps even feelings of understanding, empathy, and compassion. If we need forgiveness right now, if we need some motivation to forgive, well, there are some verses that will help us to do that. Luke says, Jesus is indeed the reason for the season, and God will always welcome us back with open arms. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repair evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. Vengeance is not even mentioned in the, this passage of Scripture. Is the Lord saying, don't act with revenge? Well, since we're all sinners, we, we might use our anger in a way that doesn't please God. Only by relying on God can we ensure that any vengeance in our hearts, well, it's done so righteously. Righteous vengeance? Well, if God is in charge of revenge, then we need to make sure we are acting with forgiveness. Boy, that's a lot to ask. But authentic forgiveness stems from a deep faith that we are not humanly equipped to practice it. That love that is needed is abundant. And even though we may have been wronged, we don't have to spend our emotional energy to have that debt paid back. This kind of trust doesn't come easily. Individuals read scripture and discuss. We report to each other. We discuss each other powerful scripture, powerful words, powerful encouragement to forgive and to be forgiven. When we are completely wrapped up in the here and now, there is still time and energy, folks to think about past wrongs. It is much more positive to embrace the present with a spirit of joy and abundance. T. 
taking time each morning to meditate and pray and accentuate the positive, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Accentuate the positive. Remember that song? you got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, launch on to the affirmative, and don't mess with Mr. In-Between. You've got to spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum, have faith or pandemonium, liable to walk upon the scene. You've got to spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum, otherwise pandemonium is liable to walk up to the scene. <laughs> Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil, insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. Why forgive? Well, forgiveness is a form of surrender and release, and it expands our capacity to love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now let us pray that prayer together that Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, till we meet again, God be with you, and God bless you. Amen.